So, you know, on occasion I have a memory of the days when Reese and I raced in Scouts. That was a great time for me. I had so much fun, and I think Reese did too. I remember today some of the goals that we had established for ourselves, and our biggest goal was to run a sub 3.0 on a 42-foot best track. And it wasn't just our goal. I think every scout and every scout dad that we knew in those days, they all had the same goal. So I've got to tell you, while Reese was in scouts, we were never able to reach that goal. It wasn't until after Reese was done and we were racing in the leagues that we finally figured out how to do it. So in today's video, we're going to take these parts right from the kit and we're going to see if we can build a three second car. So stay tuned. You might find this helpful. Okay, let's start with the body. I'm gonna build this body from this block of wood. So the first thing I'll be doing is I'm gonna rip the body down to one quarter inch. Now you may notice I'm not using the slots because I wanna change the wheelbase. But please check with your rules. You may not be permitted to do that. That's one of the two areas in this build that you might not be able to do. Now the other has to do with the wheels. I'll go over that when I get there. All right, let's get back to the body. So if you've seen any of my videos, I'm sure you already know that I own a laser and I use it to cut all of my Pinewood Derby bodies. Now I do that, I do that simply because I'm lazy. These cuts can all be done by hand with the scroll saw. So I'll make sure to include a drawing of my cut. Now I'll be moving the rear axles back and then using a four and three quarter inch wheelbase. By the way, if you're interested in any of my bodies, you can find them on my website, reeseraces.com. So now that the body's cut, I'll fill the front two openings with balsa. This is the bottom of the car. I'll cover the rear two cavities with 164 inch plywood. And I'll take 1 16th of an inch off at the down front wheel for alignment purposes. And then I'm gonna call this body done, ready to be drilled. Okay, so let's go ahead and drill. Initially, I wasn't going to film this segment because the drill jigs available today pretty much take all the guesswork out of it. This is the drill jig I use, but I had somebody request that I show the drill. So that's what I'm gonna do. This is the drill jig I use. You can pick this up on my website. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide the body into the drill jig and I'm gonna line up the back of the drill jig with the back of the body and then tighten it down. Then I'm gonna drill the rears. Now I mentioned earlier that this is a four and three quarter inch body. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna find the four and three quarter inch bushings and I'm gonna drill the front. That's all there is to it. So one thing I learned the hard way is that a great jig doesn't always create a great drill. So before I waste a lot of time finishing this car, I'm going to confirm that the drill is good. So here's how I do that. First, I'm gonna install 90 thousandths pin gauges into the rear holes. Then I'll slide two one, two, three blocks up against the straight edge. Now I'm gonna slide the pin gauges right up to the one, two, three blocks. If I see any daylight between the one, two, three blocks and the pin gauge, then I'll have to start over. Remember, if we want to reach our goal of a sub 3.00, we need to pay attention to the details. All right, let's move on to the axles. Initially, I couldn't make up my mind whether I wanted to go over the axles next or the wheels next. I finally decided let's do the axles, only because I am not looking forward to it. These axles are terrible. They're all bent. So I know I'm gonna to have to spend a lot of time tuning. They're small in diameter. They really should be three or four thousandths larger. And they've got this burr underneath the head that has to go. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna chuck this up in my lathe. Now, you don't need a lathe. If you have a drill press, that will work fine. I'll use a triangle file under the head to remove the burr. Now remember, the diameter of the axle is already too small. So I'm gonna be very careful that I don't touch the shaft. I don't wanna make it smaller. Now once the burr is removed, I'm gonna start with 600 grit and 1000 grit sandpaper, but I'm only gonna use that underneath the head. After that, I'll go to 2000, 3000 grit and the number two polish. 
and I'll do both under the head and the shaft. You may have noticed I did not remove the crimp marks because the axle diameter is already small. I'm going to try to use these crimp marks to keep my axle diameter up, but I will polish them to a mere shine. Now there's only a few things left for us to do. One, I'm going to be slotting the heads on all three of these axles. Now that allows me to adjust the steer in the front and it lets me tune the rear axles all with just a small screwdriver. And the last thing I'll be doing is bending the front axle. If you've seen some of my videos, you may know that the amount of bend should match the drill height. If you have any questions, go watch my alignment video. It goes over this in great detail. So with these axles being done, I'm going to soak them in alcohol until it's time to assemble. I'm skipping acetone because in the past, I had stock axles rust after leaving them in acetone overnight. So I guess next we'll move on to the wheels. Okay, it's time to go over the wheels. You know, earlier I mentioned there were a couple things that I'm doing that you may not be able to do in your race. The first one was the body. We've already gone over that. The second one has to do with these wheels. Not all wheels are created equal. So I like to buy a few extra sets, sort them out and pick my best ones. But if your rules specifically state that you have to use the wheels directly from the kit, then you might not be able to do this. You'd be limited to the wheels that came with the block. I don't think I've ever encountered a scout race that didn't allow you to use official BSA wheels though. So in most cases, I think you're gonna be able to do this. But if you plan on doing it, it's probably at least worth asking the question. All right, so the three things that I'm gonna look for in a wheel are the bore diameter, how much run out the wheel has, and the weight of the wheel. Now, I already know I'm not gonna find a wheel that has zero run out, that's extremely light, and has a tiny bore. So I'm going to prioritize. What's most important to me is the wheel's weight, and then run out, and then diameter of the bore. Now, I've learned that if I've got a big bore, I can usually tighten up my gaps to help eliminate some of that slop. Okay, so here's the gray area. I'd be willing to sacrifice a little bit of weight to make sure that the run out is not crazy. My goal is to find a wheel with less than about five thousandths run out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my three lightest wheels. Next, I'm going to check run out. I'm going to suggest that you use a dial indicator, but I have to be honest, I haven't used a dial indicator in a while. I've just been putting the wheel on my lathe, and I'm able to see when it has a lot of run out. Now you can see that this wheel has a ton of run out, so I won't be using it. Here's what I'm looking for. Now that we know what three wheels we will be using, I'm going to polish the treads, the hubs, and the bores. Now for the sake of this video, I'll be using my lathe to spin the wheel, but I'm not going to remove any mass. Now I use my lathe, but you can do the same thing with a drill or a drill press. Now I'm going to start with the treads. I'll start with 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 grit sandpaper, and then I'm going to use the number one and the number two turbo polish on a craft stick to make them shine. I'll also use the number one and number two on a Q-tip to polish both the inside and outside hubs. When the outside of the wheel is done, I'll use the number one and number two on a Tamiya swab to polish the bores. Once all the imperfections are removed, I'll take the wheels to my sink and scrub them down with dishwashing soap. Now this step has to be completed before using the number three. Um, if you don't already know, the number one and the number two are abrasive polishes designed to remove any imperfection in the bore. The number three is a sealant designed to make the oil bead. Okay, so to apply the number three, I'm just going to add a little bit to the end of this to my swab, and I'm going to use my drill, and I'm going to make sure I apply it thoroughly to both the bore and the hub. I'm going to let it sit for a while, and then I'm going to buff it out with a clean to my swab. And by the way, folks, less is more here. If you add too much of this, it's going to take you forever to buff out the excess. All right, next we're going to assemble, then we're going to tune, and then we're going to test. I forgot to mention earlier, after building the body, I took the body, the wheels, and axles, and I placed them on my scale and slowly started adding weight until I reached 141.75 grams, which equals 5 ounces. Then I moved the weight around until I had right at 15 grams on the front wheel. Now here's what that looks like. The last thing I did to the body was I applied CA glue to the sides and polished the glue until it shined. I did this because I see a lot of rules these days that don't allow washers 
So this is my alternative. So here's the assembled car. I think in an effort to save some time, I didn't want to film that whole process. But if you have any questions, go check out my assembly and tuning video. It goes over things in great detail. So we're going to move on to tuning. You may remember we slotted all three of the axle heads. Now I did that so I could adjust the steer on the front axle and I could tune the rear axles for speed. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the steer at four inches and put the car down the tuning board paying close attention to how far the car bounces. Then I'm going to twist one of the rear axles one eighth of a revolution and put it down the tuning board again. Again, paying attention to how far the car bounces. I'm going to twist it again one eighth of a revolution and put it down the tuning board again. I'm going to make one complete revolution and then return that axle to the location where the car bounced the best. Now remember, the bounce is nothing more than a reflection on how fast the car is moving down the tuning board. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other rear axle. Then I'll check to make sure that the steer hasn't changed. If the steer's moved, I'm going to return it to four inches. Now I'm going to call this done. It's time to go test. So a little bit about my track. It's a three lane, 42 foot best track. Although Best Track recommends I set my hill at 26 degrees. To match the leagues that I race at, I'm setting it at 27.1. And obviously that will help me some. I truly believe that the parts that I have are good enough to break the three second barrier. So if I don't make it, I'm convinced it's just a matter of getting the car tuned properly. Maybe I need more weight on the front wheel. Maybe my rear axles aren't in exactly the right location. Or maybe in this case, I've got too much steer. Now, I need to fess up. I did just bump the steer up to six inches. You know, I'm looking at this setup and I'm thinking, yeah, four inches is just not going to be enough. Okay, so here we go. First pass. Wow, I completely forgot how loud these stock wheels are. My God. But anyhow, you know, the car did run straight. It didn't wiggle at all. So I'm going to back the steer down to four inches and let's see what it does. Okay, good. So obviously I'm happy with that, but I could see the back end of the car swaying back and forth a little bit. So I'm going to, I'm going to move the steer up to five. There we go. Let's see if we can do that again. Okay. Two in a row. I'll take it. Well, folks, there you have it. A sub 3.0 on a 42 foot best track using only the parts from the kit. So a little bit about this build. This build was on graphite. I burnished the hubs, I burnished the bores, and I used lemon pledge on the axles. So the key to this build is that I sorted my wheels, used the best wheels I had, and more importantly, I really spent the time tuning the rear axles. Those axles all have a small bend, and if you don't get that bend straight up and down, you're gonna either have toe in or toe out, and that scrubs speed. So thanks again for watching my video. We'll see you on the next one.